everyone to Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can test test your instrumentation or your gauges on your car, whether it's a standard production type. This is out of, this is a fuel gauge out of a HQ Holden. Um, here's some um, auto meter gauges. I've got a fuel gauge to test genuine fuel gauge. I've got a water temperature, a fuel, and a Oil pressure gauge to test in the auto meter, and then I've got my um, my GDS Monaro um, full gauge set to test, and I'll show you how that's done. So, how are we going to test them? What do we need? We need a multimeter with it set on ohms. Uh, so, at the moment, I got it set at 2,000 ohms. You could probably get down to no, you can't get down to 200 ohms. So this this test method will test up to 300 ohms. But how I'm testing it is um, using this little test box that I made up here. Um, this is not my design. Big shout out to Rob Garcia. You're a smart dude. Um, what he showed me was if you use a couple of potentiometers um, or um, varistors, variable resistors, you can um, make a little box of this yourself. So this is what a variable resistor looks like. Um, just a little potentiometer for some people, what, what they call them. Um, so I'll try and get some light on it here. A bit better. I'm not sure if you can see it so um, you can connect up to these three lugs in the front here for the purpose of this actual um, little test jig we'll put up to the first one and the middle one the middle one's like the common this one will be rising ohms which will be um, lowering or, or going down lower so as you turn the dial forward and back you can vary the resistance um, going to any one of those gauges so what we've got here is a this one here is actually, I think it's zero to a thousand, which is no good for this because the gauges read quite low resistance. So pretty dodgy writing on the front at the moment. This is just a shame that if I turn this first dial from zero, I can go to 100 ohms resistance across these two, across these two alligator clips here. And I leave that one at 100 and I can turn this one then. And this one will go from 100 to 200. And I can turn this one and I can go from 200 to 300 ohms resistance. Um, so if you have gauges with a high resistance level, you can just add a few more, whatever you need to. You could probably add um, a 200 in there or, or a thousand in there to get a higher level one. But for the purpose of what I'm doing for my gauges, they're all quite low in resistance level. So um, I'll show you what we do here. So first up on the back of the gauge, so you see this is a genuine Holden gauge here. I'll see if I can get it down to the light better for you. All right, down there. So you can see, actually I'll take this dirty old lens off. I bought this thing for 50 bucks off eBay or something. Um, it was pretty sketchy and dirty. This thing come out of the back of the bush somewhere. But when you take the actual face off, they're quite clean inside. So you can see the gauge here, empty to full or anywhere in between. Um, and as I vary the resistance in on the back of this, on these pins in the back here, like it's hooked up to a sensor, you'll see this dial turn up towards the full line or back to empty. So back of this it has a black pin for ground it has a pink for 12 volt or ignition and then it has a tan for your signal wire so right on the back of this i'll show you what i'm going to do i'll just zoom in a bit closer for you down on the table there and you should be able to see what i'm up to down there right so back of the gauge here um also just so you know what i'm up to where i'm going to get the power supply from i have a little little 12 volt um, source here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll turn this on. I will adjust it to 12 volts. I'll put the black pin on black on, on the black for ground. I'll put the red wire on the positive, but you see what happens here. As soon as I connect power to this thing without a signal wire connected, see how it jumps to full? The same thing will happen if you don't have the correct fuel sender. So there's a couple of fuel senders here. I'm gonna show you how I check them as well. So what I'll do now is I'll connect up my little test box. So I put the red one, which I've got here on the signal wire, and I connect that black one that just dropped. Connect the black one back up to that ground as well. And you'll notice, it, oops, if they don't touch together, you'll notice that it went back to zero. So as I turn this first dial here, so this is from zero to 100 ohms resistance, you'll notice this thing, I'll it's at zero there now, it's not moved at all. As I turn it, 
yeah, right at, the, at um, the empty line there now, right? That must be like, I don't know, 10 to 20 ohms resistance there. And as I turn it, I can go all the way over to full. And I've only just moved this. You see, I'm going to move this little knob here. I haven't moved it very much to go from there to full. So when you're going to look for a fuel sender to suit that gauge, you have to look for the correct fuel sender because these fuel senders, this is um, rare spares ones, um, there's really not much info on them unless you go looking for it. But as you, as this fuel, this is in your fuel tank, drops in the top, pops in, there's a locking ring that holds it in there. Um, there's the locking ring there. Holds it all in place. Um, but as that's, um, as that's in the car and the fuel level goes up, as this rises up here, it also it changes the resistance by running it through a coil over here, right? So as this goes up, so zero down here, um, as it goes up to, I don't know, some of them are zero to 90 ohms, some of them are 30 to, 30 to 90, some are 90 to zero. So you've got to check the actual, um, the actual sender that you're using. So for me, to check this one, I'll turn my multimeter on. There because that could actually ground my that could actually ground my um, whole circuit. Get that sock off the end. I'll take the rubber o ring off while I'm there. So this one, the reason I'm doing this little video is that when I first went to start up the Orange HQ that you see me building and finished off the other week, put the fuel tank in, everything worked fine. As soon as I turned the ignition on, fuel gauge, fuel gauge went like this straight to full when there was no fuel in the tank. What that meant was I had the wrong wrong sender in the tank. So what are we gonna do here to, to check this out? Um, we'll put the ground on the metal pipework somewhere. This is on 200 ohms resistance there. I'll put the, the other terminal up against it. So you can see here, to try and hold that on there somehow. You can see here already at at empty that's reading 70 ohms. I think it's actually if I can get a good ground, a good connection on these, it's actually closer to 90, but oh, there you go. Around 80. So oh, 73. So as the fuel level goes up, you can see these go up, the ohm reading or the resistance goes down on this gauge. So when I get to the top up here and it goes from, looks like it goes from around 80 odd to zero at the top, this sender is a zero empty, or is a, is a 90 ohms empty, zero full signal. So with this one down here, I'm zero empty and I'm about 60 odd or 30 odd ohms full. So as soon as I put, as soon as I connected the everything up and I turned the key on, this thing instantly read bad or read full with no fuel in the tank. Most people would think, geez, I've got a dodgy gauge, I've got something else dodgy. Easiest way to do is pull this out. Um, you set up a little rig like this. I think all parts for this thing cost me, I think maybe 10 bucks per um, barista or, or potentiometer. So there's 30 bucks worth of them, about 10 bucks for the enclosure, a bit of solder, I used, I made some some um, some cables up for this thing with some little alligator clips on the end. They're probably one or two bucks each, and maybe tops fifty bucks to make this. You can test every gauge in your car with this setup. What I'll do is I'll get another gauge and I'll show you what happens on, on a different type of gauge. Okay, so fuel. We did fuel there. I've got a couple of other gauges here. I've got a um, auto meter, pro comp, ultra light. Fuel gauge here. Um, I will test this the same way as I tested that one there. I'll disconnect, turn the 12 volts off. I'll disconnect these off the back. You see that will go back to zero by itself now because it has no, nothing um, powering it up. So you see on the back of here, I'll try and get a bit more light there because it's a bit dark in that area. Let me just put this light up here. Hopefully that's better. Right, 
So, you can see on the back of here, it has, um, right there, that middle pin there says ground. This one here says S for signal. That one there says I for ignition. So, signal, ground, and ignition. I number one, two, three, because I have a harness made up for these that I don't want to mix up. So, I'll hook up the power supply to ignition. I'll hook up the ground to that ground pin there. I'll hook up my signal wire for that red signal and my other my ground for my test rig we're going to that same one it's the same essentially the same pin but i've got it on the lug instead of on the um on the pin so what's happened here is i'll turn the power supply on so you can see now with all these all these pots all these variable resistors turned turned down to zero that's zero ohms at full, a full tank. So if I start varying the resistance of this, now I'm at 100 ohms, it's 100 ohms is like half a tank. I'm pushing nearly 200 ohms there. So it's at empty at nearly two, at 200 ohms. So that kind of tells me that empty is 190 ohms, 190 to 230, there's a few different, um, few different senders you can get, but I can go down a bit further and get it below empty, which is probably where it would sit if the tank was dead empty. So I'm, I'm at max there, so 100, 200, and I'm probably halfway around to get to full empty. No, actually, it's, it's at full empty on on um, zero on that one. So 200 ohms, around there, 190 ohms. So if you had a, a 190 to zero, so 190 ohms resistance is empty, zero ohms is full. So back to zero ohms, you'll see there now it's at zero ohms and it's gone to full. Remember this one here was zero ohms was empty. Zero ohms here is full. So when I put this fuel gauge with this one here, it works better. When I put this fuel, uh, fuel sender with this gauge here, it automatically reads a full tank because it's over the reading, the ohms resistance of this actual gauge. So that's a fuel sender. Let's just try a different gauge here. So that was fuel. We'll go for water temperature. So here's a um, Autometer Pro Comp Ultralight water temperature gauge. On the back, same thing. You got a signal, an ignition or, or power, and a ground um, wire there. So we'll put the ground on the ground, the signal on the signal, and then on my test gear, I'll go, sorry, ignition is where that's going to go, my signal wire to there, and my ground to there. So when I power that up now, oops, one of them fell off, what fell off there, the ground fell off, turn that back up. So. You look there now, at zero ohms, this water temperature sender is reading, this is a Fahrenheit sender, this is reading off the gauge, off the scale, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. As I increase, as I increase the resistance, so you'll see here, hopefully that shows up there, I'll just check it's working in the right range where you'll see, yep. So as, up a bit, as I turn this one from zero, I go around, you can see now it's bring it back down. 100 ohms is taking it to three quarter. 200 ohms resistance is taking it to just a bit above, below half. 300 ohms resistance is taking it down, I don't know, 150 degrees. So zero is above 300 ohms for this gauge. I'd have to put another pot in here to work out exactly what this one was. But you know that, oh sorry, so 300 ohms is cold and zero ohms is hot so you got to make sure you buy the right sender to suit that particular gauge as well so that's the um water temp turn that off now we have oil pressure same again signal ignition and the ground on the back let's just connect these up the same way we did before Ground to ground, 
ignition to ignition and sender to sender. Turn the power on. These are all at, at zero right now and it's reading over 100 psi of oil pressure. When I start varying the resistance again, there's 100 ohms taking it down to 50 psi. There's around that 200 mark is taking it down to zero. So maybe around a 190, 190 at zero pressure and zero ohms at, at 100 psi is the type of sender you're looking for. So when you get a sender, they look, they look like this. So I've got a few of them here. This one um, at zero psi, it reads 10 ohms. But this one here at zero psi, it reads 60 ohms resistance. And I think, I'm not sure about this one. I think this one's the same. I think this one was um, exactly the same as, as this zero to 60. So, um, so there's a difference in those. Likewise, if you've got a, a water temperature sender, there's a couple of different types. There's a larger type like this, which is a bit like the standard Holden one, or there's a smaller one like this, which comes on other vehicles, things like the Tiranas, LJs, that type of stuff have these smaller versions. Um, you can see there's it's come from Holden Spares, but um, they've got their um, Flex Delphi or something like that in the back of it. It's got a code number there. I can't actually read it. They just hide it so you can't copy the, um, the numbering of it. But again, these are the same type of things. You can um, check the resistance of these things. Okay, this is what I was trying to explain before. So that sender must be stuffed because when I tested it, it didn't actually show any temperature at all or any any variation in that um, in the reading. So if I, I have the I have my one of my terminals connected just touching the side of the actual sender and this other pin I put if I put it on the on the connector pin on the end of it here you can see it's off the scale. It's not actually reading anything. But if I start heating the end of this up so it's below it's below the temperature that the engine will register um, any temperature on the gauge. So if I start heating this up course that turns off now watch what happens as I heat this up so you'll see it start to change and you'll see the resistance start ticking up the scale there in a second there you go it came out like a 190 198 so cold is somewhere either 190 or 230 ohms and as I heat this I can keep heating this this is like your engine getting hot and this sender sending out a uh, like a variable resistance now based on temperature and I can heat this up right down till I get to zero and zero will be hot on your gauge. <coughs> so, a couple of simple ways to test everything, I'll let that cool down at the moment but you'll see as well if I if I try and cool it as, I, as it's cooling down <coughs> as it's cooling down you'll see the the resistance reading climbing. If I stick this cold can of V on the side of it it goes a lot quicker but So there you go, it's, it's climbing back up as the, as the sender cools down. So I guess as your thermo fans are cooling the coolant in your engine, coolant engine temperature is going down, the resistance this thing is um, showing based on temperature will, um, will increase for this type of sender. I'll try it again on the other one just in case it, it works and I just did something wrong. But yeah, that's, that's that. So if I take this sender out, it's got to be mindful it's still a bit, bit hot. I only put it in the in the vise here so I can um, so I don't have to hold it in my hand when it gets hot. I'm just clamping the probe on the side as a ground, it's just like tightening and tightening the um, the sender up in the engine block. <coughs> <coughs> so that shows nothing when it's cold. Let's see when I put a little bit of temperature in it. See if anything changes on it. You see what I mean? That other sender would have already would have already started um, creeping up the scale by now. I put on a higher reading, see if anything happens. So this sender here was in the car, and I couldn't work out. It was brand new. The engine was built, and um, and when we first started it up, it showed no um, it showed no temperature um, to the gauge, and I thought it was the gauge that was stuffed until. 
like I mentioned before, Rob Garcia come round. He had a, he had a little test jig like this that he made for himself um, before he advised me on how to make this one for myself. Um, and he set it up and he tested the gauge. He said, your gauge is perfect. Your sender's stuffed. So then I had to chase around because then we worked out using this box what the range was for the temperature gauge. Um, and like I mentioned here before, you can be at zero on a gauge, but you could be at full resistance of the sender. You could be at full on the gauge, you could be at zero resistance that the sender is sending out to you now. So um, that's how you do it on those basic type of um, basic type of gauges, like a Holden um, HQ type gauge. Um, that will work on Ford, Chrysler, anything anything that has that old school type of gauge that needs a an active a ground and a um, and a signal wire, like I mentioned on the back of here. Even those um, auto meter ones are the same. They have a uh, an ignition which is the power, a signal wire and the ground. Um, what I'll do, I'll grab the I'll grab the GDS um, dash. It's not in the car yet. I'm just playing around with some stuff and I'll connect it up and I'll show you exactly what's happening. So I mentioned before, sorry, I mentioned the, um, the, the fuel senders, which I have two of them over here. Um, one of them, this one here is the correct one for this Holden dash here, right? This Holden gauge. And this one here says it's a fuel tank sender for HQ magnetic style. It's a magnetic style gauge, um, sedan, wagon, coupe, six cylinder or V8 with no air conditioning. So there's, if you had air conditioning, there's a different type of, different type of sender you have to put in the car to match the gauge. So these gauges are quite cheap. It's probably, I don't know, maybe 150 bucks, 200 bucks or something for one of these fuel senders. You can pick up a fuel gauge for your car for maybe 20 to 50 bucks. If you know what it's out of, you don't have to spend 200 bucks to buy a sender. You can spend 20 to 50 bucks and buy a fuel gauge. One, two, three screws and it's out. You pull the, you pull the warning light connectors off the back here. You pull one plug off that has the three connectors on it. <coughs> Take your indicator off the back, swap it all over, put it in the car, turn it on and your fuel gauge might read perfectly. So just keep that in mind. <coughs> like I said, I'll clear the deck here and I'll get the GDS dash out and I'll show you how, it, um, how that works. Just one more thing before I bring the GDS dash up here. Um, so what I did here was, this is the correct fuel sender for this gauge. I put a signal wire from the, from the signal pin on the top of the sender to the signal position on the back of the gauge. Hooked up the power supply to the gauge. Hooked up the ground. I just stuck in the pipe there at the moment. The ground from there to the back of the gauge and put the ground from the power supply to the sender. So now when you see out of the car, this is what I was trying to explain before. So sender's all the way down, no fuel in the car. As you raise the sender up, you can see it's varying the resistance, just like I was doing with that little box over there before, all the way to the full pin. That's actually on full pin now, you can see it all the way up. And look, the, the, to say these gauges aren't accurate is a load of bullshit. You match the right gauge, the right sender, and these things are, I don't know how far past empty. If I look at this, this thing is sitting on the pin on the bottom and it is just below that empty line. So you'd be a pretty brave guy to run a HQ Holden or, a King, or any other sort of um, Holden Kingswood much past that empty line because I dare say this sock is sitting on the bottom of the tank like this. This sock is sitting down there on the bottom of the tank. The fuel sender is pretty much sitting on the bottom of the tank like that, which means you have absolutely nothing in that tank in reserve. And as you raise this up, it comes up. Get out of the way. As you raise this up, the fuel gauge comes up, hits the pin. On the pin, it is smack bang on the full line. On the pin down there, it is pretty much right on that, um, right on that empty line. So um, there's another test for you. So if you've got your gauge out of your car and you've got the sender out of your car, um, you can do that test as well, and that will. Um, Definitely work for you. Now I'll show you the back of the GDS dash and what I've got to do with that. So I'll just pull these jumper wires off here, set this gauge aside, and we'll um, bring the other dash over. 
Right, factory HQ GDS dash. This is a 1972 model car. So the things I can check on this, I can't check the speedo because it needs it needs the cable to spin to actually move the move the dial up and down. But um, you can spin on the back like this, spin the dial on the back, and you can actually make the speedo move. I guess if you put a drill to it, you could probably make the thing spin and, and keep a constant um, range. So this has um, miles per hour on the inside and kilometers per hour on the outside. Um, 10 miles, is about 10 miles an hour, 16 kilometers an hour. So I can't test the battery here because the battery is checking the difference across um, across your alternator and your battery supply. Correct me if I'm wrong for people that know better than that. So it's checking variation in charging or not charging. So it's got a C, I'll turn that right around so you can see it better there. It's got a C up this side here to say charging and it's got a D on this side to say discharging. So it's either charging the battery or not charging the battery. I check the temperature gauge. Um, I can't check the taco. Um, I can check the fuel gauge and I can check the oil gauge just like I did on the other ones. So we'll do the same thing. We'll get the, these are my signal wires again. I'll put that on. Tan is the signal one for one of those. Um, ground, I'll ground it at the at the actual lug that holds holds the gauge on. And then I'll get my power supply, which you're gonna have to bring closer. Running out of room. My power supply will go to the pink. And my Where's my power supply? Ground, there it is there. I'm thinking I should be able to just ground this to the actual frame here because the frame of this should be grounded. So, turn that on. You can see there, hopefully you can see there, let me see. Yep. You can see there that the um, the fuel gauge is reading zero, and this is my zero to 100 ohms dial here. So it tells me empty my fuel gauge. I need my fuel sender like the one I have here. At empty is zero ohms, and at full looks like it's about 30 ohms. So this particular sender is a zero to 30 ohms sender. So again, if I put some jumper wires across this, just like I did. The other thing, if I go, there's the ground, shove the ground in the pipe, because the pipe's grounded the whole thing, and um, clamp this ground in under here somewhere with that. Try that again. Clamp that. Clamp that on there. Come on, yeah, I can even stay there. And this one can go on the side of it just so they're all grounded together. Oh, and I heat shrunk this alligator clip here and it doesn't open very much so I've got to try and find the right place to ground it. Why didn't I just do that in the first place? So now I'll put that's right. Now I'll put this signal wire on there the signal wire to back of the gauge. I'll show you in a second what I've done. So I'm getting rid of that that other signal wire there. Sorry, I don't need this signal wire. This, um, I just need to go between because I'm not actually using the test box so I don't know what I was thinking. I just need to ground these two things together. So my fuel gauge is at zero as I raise the sender up, so zero is on the pin. As I raise the sender up, full, empty. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just double check that that'll be within the view of the of the camera. So as you can see here now, the three 
three potentiometers or varistors or variable resistors are at zero, and so is that oil pressure gauge. As I start turning this zero to 100, what am I at here? I'm at halfway at 100 ohms. When I start turning the second one, I'm at pipe pressure at 200 ohms, around, I guess, either, it's either 190 or, or 230 ohms. So when you go and buy, when you go and buy a fuel, like an oil pressure sender, um, this one here, you can see at zero PSI, is 10 ohms. So if I back this right off again, as soon as I get that back down to the pin, that 10 PSI, or that 10 ohms, is not even enough to pick it up, start reading on the gauge. So you can see, I can turn this, remember it's zero to 100, so I can turn this like 20 or so ohms before it starts moving that dial. So that zero PSI at 10 ohms is the correct um, sender. And at a, because I tested this at 193 ohms, 193, which this matches over here when I go two of these dials to the end, zero PSI, 10 ohms, 93 ohms, sorry, zero PSI is 10 ohms, 93 ohms is, is high pressure. So zero PSI is the lower. So there you go. There's a difference in what you can buy. This actual one here is the same as that, right? It's, um, if you're looking for the part number, I got this through Repco. This um, 360-004 is the actual part number for that particular gauge and that sender. <coughs> I don't have something to pump this pressure up to be able to show that, or I'll do that for you as well. Uh, maybe I can work something out another way to do that, but there you go. So that's oil pressure checked, fuel checked. Now I'm going to check the temperature over there. Move this camera back. So you can see that clearly. Right, you can see the temperature goes there, yep. Same again, turn off the power, signal wires off. <clears throat> On the back over here, I have the pink, which is power supply. Back it up. And then I have the signal wire which is there and then I just I'm gonna have to ground these two here's a good ground position this is where it grounds in the dash and turn the power on so so you can see there now if I turn all these to zero you'll see what happens that temperature gauge goes off the scale so you know that the temperature gauge is the reverse, the center is the reverse of that gauge. So if I go back to met zero now, if I start turning these up, there's 100 ohms. That's 200 ohms. It's taken that to just above cold. And if I go a little bit more, that's about 230 ohms, so 230, ohms resistance is zero on your temperature gauge and zero ohms resistance is full temperature on your temperature gauge which is like zero to 230 or 230 to zero so you want a 230 ohms to zero ohms not a zero ohms to 230 ohms or we'll read backwards like that so again just be careful of the temperature sender you get <coughs> like i mentioned before this is the one i bought it's a vdo one it's really hard to read the back of this but this looks like this looks like part number three two zero 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 two so they've um stuck that sticker over the top of it flexible something flexible drives or something it's called from video um so yeah make sure you get the right one of these and um you should see that work um no problem at all i'll see if i can get this temperature sender to work with that temperature gauge there right so what i've done now is I put that temperature sender that I know that I think matches that gauge in my vise. I've clamped the ground wire to it, attach a signal wire to it. The signal wire goes to the back of the gauge. There's a power supply putting 12 volts to the back of that gauge and putting a ground to the aluminium fascia here. This gauge is grounded to the back of that. So what I'll do now is I'm going to heat it up with a heat gun. 
I'll hit the sender up. You should be able to see that gauge move, if I'm correct. There we go, it's off to zero now. Creeping up towards a quarter. Past the quarter, towards half. There you go, it's at half now. Been half and three quarters. It's up at three quarters now. There you go, now it's up in the red, and it's hot, so there you go. I wouldn't want to touch the sender now, probably burn my fingers on it. But there you go, it's um correct sender for that gauge. Now the reason I'm showing you this stuff is, if you don't check these things before you install them in the car, this, um, this Monaro over here, that I'm, this GDS that I'm building here, if I don't get everything right on that car, and I've got all the paint and all the panel work and everything pristine and the interior is schmick, and I put that gauge cluster in there and things don't work, I gotta start pulling things out. That's where you start scratching things and damaging things and, um, and it becomes a real pain in the ass. So um, just be mindful when you're doing this sort of stuff. Um, plan ahead. Double check everything like I'm doing here now. Like I said, I can spin the speedo, I know that works. I just can't check the taco, but the only thing with the taco is I can take three screws out of here, pull the face out, disconnect the wires. The main issue you usually get with the taco is people connect it to the wrong wire at the dizzy or the coil. Um, so as long as you pick the right one there and get it back and your wiring's okay, I've got the wiring in the box over there, I'm going to send it away and get it all re rebuilt, make it all pristine, make sure it works first time every time. I'm going to rebuild all these gauges, I'll do a video on those as well, um, and hopefully um, people will learn something from that as well. So hopefully this has been pretty informative for you. Um, one more thing I want to do before I close up this video is I'm going to open up this little test box just to show you that it's not actually voodoo inside. I'll show you what's actually done inside here to make this work. Show you the back of the resistors or variable resistors so you know how it all actually works. This isn't open yet. No, I'll just unplug those. Oops, and there you go, I just snapped off one of my wires. I'll show you how good I solder. <laughs> so this little wire is supposed to be on this pin down here. So um, I'll turn this light across this way a bit, so maybe you can see it. So there's the back of the resistors. There's a input. It goes through the first resistor as you turn it. It varies the resistance in that one. It links to the next one, so 100, 200, 300 ohms, and the one I just snapped off then connects onto here. And in the back of the, the other half of the box, there's just these little adapters here where you push your multimeter wires in, or make up a couple of make up a couple of simple ones like I did. Um, here's what I here's what I actually did here. There's the um, there's the positive and negative just there, and they just push into these little ports in the back here and then those two are the two wires you connect to in the back of the box. The other end I just put a couple of alligator clips on it with some heat shrink over it to insulate it from the other gauge um, pins and, um, and it works perfect. One more time, shout out to Rob Garcia, thanks dude. Um, that's been really helpful for me. I know you've come and checked all these gauges before for me using yours but it's pretty informative to be able to put it up on a YouTube channel and show people how to do it so thanks again. Um, remember everyone, if you like what I'm doing here, hit the subscribe button, every subscriber helps. Um, hit the like button, people see that someone else has liked it, they go and look as well. Um, and if you know someone that's doing what I'm doing here, and um, they may struggle with it a bit, or they're doing the same sort of job, share it with them, um, and let them know about the channel, and then um, what I do can help other people as well. So, thanks again, and keep watching.